I say uh, YouTube. I hate when people come on here with all that high energy. YouTube. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. And just like that, we bike. If it's your first time rocking with the ball, <laughs> I be the K I N G S P R double three. That be me, King Spree. And you locked in with the realest they tell me. Reporting live from Savannah, Georgia. The cater way is crazy. Or whatever Lloyd said. Um, before we even get into it, man, forget all the other intros. I usually come in and say, hey, baby, I know you've been waiting for that mixtape. It's coming soon and you're going to love it. I also say, man, about about 85 degrees outside, not a cloud in the sky. Praise the most high. I say all that. But let's get right into it, man. We got to get back to the content. You know, the buzzword. We got to get back to the content. So, listening to the Joe Button podcast. And they were talking about a list that had came out, I guess, a couple weeks ago. Um, things straight men shouldn't do, right? And I don't know every little thing on the list. I tried to look for the list, couldn't find it. Typed in, typed it in. The shit took me to damn near some type of G A Y porn. I was like, nah, bro, I, I can't. All right, I'm good. I'm good. I can't type nothing else. I type, I typed in things straight men shouldn't do. The first thing that popped up was <laughs> the grinder or whatever they call that shit. Nah, I'm, right, I'm good. I'm good. So. Um, and there's nothing wrong with that for those that get down like that. I don't want to get canceled with a little bit of a following I have. Um, so anyway, things straight men shouldn't do. So they mentioned a couple things. Some of it's like, I guess, like satire. Some of it's like, oh, don't drink with a straw. You shouldn't be using bo body wash. Uh, straight men shouldn't put their lips on a hookah. That might be true, though. Um... You shouldn't be getting fruity drinks. Uh, it was a lot of stuff that like, some of it like I agree with. And some of it was just like, obviously like they're being funny. But Joe Biden made a good point. It wasn't, and um, the whole thing spawned off of Saucy Santana. That's the name, Saucy Santana. And what he was saying about the hookah. Uh, so Joe Biden made a point that he thinks that, not thinks, he feels like that wasn't aimed at gay straight men that was aimed at i mean sorry not gay um straight men that shouldn't do certain things that was aimed at black men that shouldn't do certain things right and before we continue we love everybody over here this, this is not a thing of, of of hate or making it seem like i don't like this we're just talking about a funny basically for fun and funny being funny what they say straight men shouldn't do right and as a straight man i wanted to see if i agree with some of that stuff so it was a lot of funny little jokes about what we shouldn't do, how we shouldn't carry ourselves, so on and so on, right? And it, But the point he made about the black man thing got me thinking. And for the past, I mean, I hate to say it, but ever since Me Too, there's been a huge um, feminine and feminist agenda. You could argue it, you could say it's not true, but it, it, it is. And everything has become inclusive, right? Very inclusive. And, and, it sh and everybody should be represented to some point or another, right? There should not be anybody that's uh, underrepresented or not represented in a certain demographic. But what's been happening is uh, a lot of like over correction, right? If I owe you $50 and I took too long to pay, imagine me giving you $5 million. That's like what's, what's going on right now. A lot of over correction. Now, some could say, well, you're a man. You wouldn't understand because you've been have the opportunity to do whatever you want. And a lot of people that are uh, other, whether women or different minorities, other than the male, the male population, um, they've been underrepresented and haven't had as many opportunities as others. So as a result, they, they do need an overcorrection. OK, I get it. But a lot of things, to be honest, has been to the point where they're forcing it on you. Right. They're forcing it. P Valley times five. They forcing like a lot of this stuff on you. It's in everything. It's not just, it's not just in the, the programming that you want to see if you like that kind of stuff. It's in everything, right? So anyway, when saying what straight men shouldn't do, and in particular black straight men, it does ring off a little bit like you're trying to control us more than you already are. We're already at a stage where we can't say nothing wrong. I mean, we can't say nothing at all or it's wrong. We can't show any type of emotion. We can't show any type of anger. Something can happen to us, we have to take it on the chin. We won't even talk about police brutality 
and being stereotyped by the cops that that's that's been a thing forever and it will continue to be a thing um even within our own relationships a lot of times we're battling we're struggling for for power within our own home um the black man in my opinion is the most disrespected the and and it goes and it goes no problem the black woman probably is second, but the black the black man is the most disrespected, and there's no problem. There's no there's no fight for the black man for equality. There's no fight for the black man other than by black men. There's no fight for the black man for supremacy or anything that in regards to, to climbing up the ladder other than by black men. But the community at whole is not running out of out of their way to like fight for black men, right? And I always compare the black men thing to like Dragon Ball Z, if you watch Dragon Ball Z. A black man is a lot like a, a, a Saiyan. Where, like, Frieza's whole thing was, I gotta get eradicate the, the Saiyans before they, they overtake me. They're not there yet, but they're climbing. And they got the potential to get strong every time they lose a battle. I can't have them overtake me. Well, that's a lot like the society as a whole, in my opinion. I think that the black man is seen as, like, we gotta paint a picture of them so that they don't ever get too far removed from where they started if a couple slipped through the cracks a couple jay-z lebron's rihanna's beyonce's michelle obama's barack kanye so on and so on um robert robert smith uh bob johnson if a couple slipped through the cracks that's fine oprah but uh tyler perry of course but we can't have all of them thinking that this is a possibility we can't have all of them being high success stories um, so back to the thing straight men can't do, I really do think that the list, especially coming from black people saying this, black men saying this, is um, really just saying what, it, it's kind of perpetuating what we already have where it's like, yo, listen, man, how many things are you going to put against black men? And I'm not, it's not a victim thing because as a black man, we're strong, I'm going to figure it out and I'm going to keep trucking forward. But how many things are we going to put against us before it's like, yo, come on. Like every little thing is something we can't do. Every little thing that we do is a problem. And if I can't dribble a ball, sing a song or entertain somehow or just invent something, then I can't be a part of the success story that is, uh, you know, the U.S. But for every other demographic of people from from Latin men to white men to Latin women to, to, to black women nowadays, um, everything. Um, they are represented nowadays in a high light, but black men haven't really gotten that support other than from black men. And it just begs the question of, are you really saying it's a straight thing straight men shouldn't do, or is it becoming another thing of what black men shouldn't do and another way to like suppress us? And I know there's going to be some comments. If I even get any comments that say, you don't know what the fuck you're talking about. You just lazy. You don't put in that work. You know, you, you obviously are uneducated. You don't know the, the, the hardships uh, people have to go through. Listen, I'm not saying that they don't. I know that there is a story behind everybody, right? There's a story behind everybody's upbringing. But I don't think it's deniable that black men have had it the hardest. I don't think it's deniable. And I don't think it's deniable that right now, as we speak in 2023... Black men are the are the least represented when it comes to any form of fighting for equality. And I always I don't say this, but I always uh, fall under this um saying. I think Kevin Samuel said it. I'm when you ask for equality, you're not asking for equal outcome. You're asking for equal opportunity, and that's all we want. But we're not getting the opportunity if every little thing we do is micromanaged if every little thing we do is a problem if we can't even smile right bro i'll be at the gym sometimes i'm kind of going off or digressing but um i'll be at the gym sometimes and like back in the day if you see a, a beautiful uh woman you look at a you look at a woman and give a head nod or you look at her intently not like on some silly boy stuff but just on some like male to woman um um uh, male to female interaction and they sh you know she'll probably look away and, and smile and it would just be known that like hey you're an attractive woman and I'm a man and I'm not going to look away from you because I'm a man. But nowadays, I got to damn near do this. I got to do like that in the gym. And mind you, it ain't like the women in there wearing fucking um, big hoodies and, and, and big sweatpants. They in that motherfucker, dog, 
little high, like, little little eighteen year old girls just hit college, all the way up to forty. They in that motherfucker with the tightest of tights, with the shortest of shorts, with the with the holster top, sports bra, all that, bending down, squatting. Do that one girl literally was shaking her butt, literally was twerking, and. If you look, you're the and not it's not just dumb looking to see if you look. It's the people around you seeing if you're looking. And it's like, dog, I can't even fucking work out because everything's a problem. Now take that and, and, and put it to regular life and I, and every day, everything's a goddamn problem that we do. And I'm I'm speaking as a man that works in a hospital setting where I have to walk around and and deal with patients that probably grew up in a, at a different time where a lot of like segregation and so on and so on. So when I say I I, I I see it every day. I see it every day, man. I, I see it every day. And you would hope that when you come home, you would get that reprieve. You don't. You would hope when you go to the gym, you go to your social settings, you go out, you don't. And I understand there are some people that are knuckleheads. There are some people that are knuckleheads. But as a as a whole, I think that we're doing a lot of positive things. But it just seems like every time we turn around, there's another guideline of what we can't do. There's another guideline on why we got to stay put. There's another guideline on why we can't prosper. And like I said, if we don't dribble the ball, entertain you, sing, dance, whatever the case might be, I feel like we are underrepresented when it comes to the equality that people say that they want. It's my opinion. I don't want it to be controversial. This ain't a thing about, um, not, not, it's not trying to fight nothing. It's just trying to say, sometimes I, I, sometimes I wonder, how to keep from going under, right? Anyway, like, comment. Y'all tell me if y'all agree, disagree, hate it, love it, whatever. Um, like, man, like my shit and subscribe. Real talk, you hear me? It's been a mess, buddy, by the good people over here at Spree and T. It's gonna make sense real soon.